Welcome back to Master Tech, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do motion detection with Arduino or Raspberry Pi or any other microcontroller. I'll start with some basic wiring and code examples to show how to use motion detection. And then at the end, I'll show you how I built this cool motion detecting glowing blue sting sword replica from Lord of the Rings. So motion detection is obviously a super fun technology with a very wide range of applications that hobbyists and makers might want to incorporate in their builds. And then on the professional side of things, incorporating motion detection into things like automatic lights and other smart systems around the house is becoming more and more common. And one of the core pieces at the center of builds like this is the infrared motion detection sensor often called a PIR sensor. And this specific chip and module is called the HCSR501 motion detection sensor. Don't worry about memorizing the numbers. I'll leave a link to the one that I'm using here in the description of this video. And they're just a few dollars for pretty high quality, pretty well-functioning sensors. And the way the sensor works at a very broad level is it casts an infrared cone to detect motion in front of it going outward from this kind of ball that's on the end of it. And then there's actually a fair bit of functionality baked into the chip where the entire connection between your infrared sensor and your Arduino or microcontroller is just three wires, a five volt signal, a ground signal, and then a digital output that just reads high or five volts energized when motion has been detected, and then low, zero, no volts, not energized when motion goes away. And the settings that you get to play with on the sensor are actually just as important as knowing how to incorporate this into the microcontroller. So I'm gonna talk briefly to you about those. Starting with these two dials that come on the sensor. They can be adjusted with a terminal screwdriver or another small tool. And one knob is for the sensitivity or essentially how far out that cone of infrared sensing is going to be projecting from the tip of the sensor. And then the other knob is the time delay knob, which is your setting to determine how long after detecting motion you want the signal to stay energized. So on the very short end, this can go away after just basically one second. And on the long end, it can be several minutes. Sensor to sensor, these ranges do change a little bit. And then the other super important thing to talk about on the sensor itself is the triggering mode. And that's these three metal pins that usually come with a two prong trigger already on two of the pins. And if it's on the top two pins as you're looking down at the dials, you're in single trigger mode. And in single trigger mode, it doesn't matter if the sensor keeps detecting motion once it's already detected motion, it's going to wait out until the time delay knob tells it it's done. And then there's going to be a couple of seconds of buffer time before it can detect motion again and turn the output on again. So if you were using this to turn the lights on in a room and then stay on for five minutes, it doesn't matter if motion was detected again during that five minutes. At the end of the five minutes, the lights are going to turn off and then you'll have to wait a second before they come back on, which is obviously not ideal for every project. So that's why the bottom two pins, if you move the jumper down there, put it into multi-trigger mode or repeat trigger mode. And in repeat trigger mode, it's basically the opposite of single trigger mode, which is you can repeatedly send motion in that infrared cone. And as long as it sees motion before the timer lets out, it could stay on forever. So this is obviously more ideal for things like motion detector lights, but again, not perfect for every scenario. And these settings are easy to change locally on the sensor, and they'll be different for every project that you wanna build. So feel free to play around with those settings a little bit because the code and the wiring into your microcontroller couldn't be much simpler. So as I said before, five volts in ground are two of the three pins, and I don't even actually need an Arduino at this point. I'm just using it because it's a good example of a five volt power supply Apply, but I have the output wire for this first example going straight to the positive leg of an LED, which is then grounded back to the Arduino. But what you can see is I can just trigger motion on the infrared sensor and I can get the LED to turn on without any code written so far. And this is actually a great point for you to pause with your project to understand the two dials and the trigger mode pins a little bit better before diving into any code or anything that makes it more complicated. But obviously not everything that you would wanna do with motion detection can be boiled down to just using the output pin to turn an LED on and off. So when you do wanna pull it into the Arduino, you don't even need a special library 
library. It's just a digital input that is going to read five volts when it's been triggered and zero volts when it hasn't. So the most basic version of a code that basically does exactly what our hardwired example does would be this. And this is code that reads an input from the motion sensor just like we just had, and then writes an output to the LED just like we just had, but now we've used an Arduino to be the basic interface between the two. Again, this isn't that exciting yet, but it does show basics of how to use motion detection with a microcontroller. And then the only limit to how creative you can get from that point onward is your ability to write some decent code and build an interesting physical project. And this is a great time to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay is one of the top manufacturers of printed circuit boards and PCB assemblies for hobbyists and makers. In addition, they have great 3D printing and metal prototyping services, a super friendly and responsive support team, great turnaround time, and super high quality builds. So be sure to check them out at the link in the description of the video. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring the video. And one of the things that I love so much about the online maker community is how many incredible high quality 3D printable files there already are for free out there. Like this awesome Sting replica sword that I was able able to find from the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit movies. And so all I had to do was do a little bit of 3D modeling and design in the background to build a bracket that could hold my sword for display and have some embedded NeoPixel RGB lights in the background and a motion detection sensor on the bottom so that anyone who comes near would make the blade glow blue just like it would when goblins were near in the movies. So is that a nerdy example? Maybe, but you clicked on how to use motion detection with an Arduino, so I figure you'll appreciate it. Okay, and that is going to do it for today's tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions or comments or want to let me know what you want to see more of on the channel, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters, as well as everyone who leaves likes on the videos and subscribes to Lamaster Tech. Good luck with all of your projects, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.